What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Riddell, and today we'll be going over one of my favorite openings, the Scotch Gambit. It starts with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, and here after e takes d4, white could take the pawn back and go into the Scotch game, but here white decides to play bishop c4, and we've reached the Scotch Gambit. This is a very aggressive and very sound opening. And if Black's not careful, can find himself in trouble really fast. Today we're going to be going over three moves. Bishop e7, Bishop c5, and Bishop b4 check. All of these are extremely common responses, and in this video, I want to help you be better prepared for anything that comes your way. Tomorrow we will drop a part two to the Scotch Gambit series, going over knight f6, d6, and g6. I think this opening has a ton of potential to help you win more games, and if you're serious about implementing this into your repertoire, I recommend watching this video more than once in order to help you really understand the moves, concepts, lines, and ideas. Without further ado, let's hop right in. First, let's take a look at bishop e7. I really do find bishop e7 to be a weak move. It makes the pawn on f7 very vulnerable to attack, and it's just very passive. Here white plays c3. And in the Scotch Gambit, c3 is very common. Here white is looking to get a larger lead in development and also break things open. The most common response here for black is to play knight f6. But here I think white is simply better after e5, kicking the knight to e4, playing bishop d5, kicking the knight to c5, snatching up the pawn on d4, and after knight e6, playing a move like knight c3. And I think white has a very nice and very comfortable position here. White can play moves like bishop e4, castles, etc. So after knight f6, white is doing just fine. Let's take a look at d3. Now d3 is a mistake because it allows queen b3. And this really shows why bishop e7 was such a weak move. On move 6, there's no way for black to really defend this pawn on f7. Knight a5 is the very best move here. But we can snatch up the pawn. And after king f8, play a move like queen a4. And after king takes f7, play queen takes a5. And here, the position is much better for white because we're at even material, but this pawn on d3 is really weak. White can play a move like queen d5 check, followed by taking the pawn. And this king on f7 is very vulnerable to attack, so I think this position is much better for white. Going back to c3, we looked at knight f6 and d3 and how white can take advantage of both. Another thing I run into a lot, though, is d takes c3. And I think this is a mistake as well, because it allows queen d5. And at move 6, we are already threatening checkmate on f7. Knight to h6 is really forced here. I actually had a game against a 1500 elo player about 10 years ago, where my opponent played d6. The game ended with queen takes f7 check, and after king d7, bishop e6 checkmate. And the game was over. So needless to say, guys, after queen d5, black is forced to play knight h6. But here white can just continue with bishop takes h6, castles, snatching up the pawn on g7. And after king takes g7, play knight takes g3. The most common move here is d6. And here there is a very nice square for the queen on h5. And I think this position is very nice for white. The position is even... Again, this king on g7 is pretty vulnerable, and white just has a very comfortable game here, so I definitely like white's position more. So again, going back to c3 here after bishop e7, if black plays knight f6, we can just push with e5. If black pushes with d3, we can play queen b3, attacking this very weak f7 pawn. And if black takes the pawn, we can play queen d5, attacking the pawn on f7, and I really like this position for white. So we went over bishop e7, 
Let's take a look at bishop c5. Now with bishop c5, a lot of times this converts into the Gekko piano. We play c3 again, and the best move for black here is knight f6. And we see after c takes d4, we are now into the Gekko piano. The main line is bishop b4 check, defending with bishop d2, trading off the bishops. And here in this position, white has a very strong center, so the best move by far is d5. Take the pawn on d5, and after knight takes d5, play queen b3, putting some pressure on this knight on d5. And after knight c e7, white can castle here. Future moves include rook e1, rook c1, the e4 and the e5 squares are open for the knights. This is a very comfortable position for white, and I actually made a video on the Gigro piano. So if you want to look at this position in more depth, check that one out. I'll leave the link in the description below. Going back to c3, after bishop c5, we went over knight f6, which is black's strongest to reply. But let's go over d takes c3. d takes c3 is a mistake for black, because here white could play bishop takes f7 check. And after king takes f7, play queen d5 check. Here we see king f8, taking the bishop off the board. And here after queen e7, white has a few options, including queen e3 and queen f5 check. But I personally like trading the queens off the board. And after knight g takes e7, taking on c3. And I think white has an advantage here. This knight is threatening to come to b5, attacking the c7 pawn. So here, a6 is probably the best option for black. White has a space advantage. This knight can come to d5, castle. This bishop can come to e3, f4, g5, etc. This is just a really easy and really fun position to play with for white. So after bishop c5 and c3, again, not a good move to take this pawn here. I think knight f6 is a lot better. But even then, we transpose into the Gekko piano, and I think white is doing just fine. So we took a look at bishop e7 and bishop c5. Let's take a look at bishop e4 check. This can be very dangerous for black as well. We play c3 here, and the most common move here is to take the pawn on c3. A lot of players here will take on c3 with the pawn or with the knight, and either of these work, but I really like the move castles kingside. In the database, white performs very well in this position, and I think black finds himself in a lot of trouble really quickly, if not very careful. I think the best move here is probably d6. And again, the most common reply is to take this pawn on c3 with the pawn or the knight, but I like the move a3, kicking the bishop back to a5, playing b4, kicking the bishop back to b6, playing queen b3. Notice how this queen and bishop are really putting a lot of pressure on the f7 pawn. And after queen e7, playing knight takes c3. Here white is down a pawn, but I really do like the position for white as white has a huge advantage in development and space. And even the computer, when I plugged this position in, said that white was much better. So again, castling instead of taking the pawn back. I think that this is a very good option. I would like to mention though, after castles, c takes b2 is not a good option for black because here we have bishop takes b2. And I think that this bishop on c4 and bishop on b2 are just too much for black to handle. Here white is threatening to take on g7. And after f6, white can play queen b3. And after knight h6, White can play the very aggressive and very strong e5, breaking open the center of the board, and I think black is in a lot of trouble. So thanks for watching today's video. Let me know what you guys thought of this opening, and make sure to check in tomorrow as we wrap this opening up. I wish you guys a great day. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch another one, you can click or tap up here. And I've got a lot more high-quality chess content on the way, so if you'd like to subscribe, you can click or tap down here. I really appreciate your support.